All right, welcome back to the quest for 16. If you've been following along, you know we're trying to uh, catalog our uh, journey to 16 blue chip recruits. Today on the list, we've got two more. Um, so let me start you with this. When you go to the chicken, what do you order? Do you get a Cosmopolitan? Uh, are you looking for a martini or something like that? I uh, kind of doubt it. Yeah, more than likely you're looking for, you know, you're going to get a picture of Lone Star or Bud Light. You know, it doesn't really matter. It's just going to be a picture of beer. You can get the martini if you want. You can get the Cosmopolitan. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't even know if they serve that. It never even occurred to me to ask. Um, again, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's going to look a little bit out of place, right? So same, same kind of idea, though. When you go to the chicken, what do you play while you're at the table? You can play spades, you can play hearts if you want. Uh, but typically, you're gonna see people playing dominoes, right? And if not, it's gonna look out of place. Um, you're not gonna see people ordering martinis uh, usually. You're not gonna see people playing cards normally. It's 42, it's uh, bones, something like that, right? So um, this next guy is kind of the same way. He, he looks out of place when he's lined up in the backfield, but in a good way for his team. So. Today we're looking at uh, Donovan Green. He's a six foot four, 235 pound tight end from Dickinson High School. He's rated .94 by 247 and he's a four star recruit. So he is helping us get to that 16. Now he's a mismatch no matter who he lines up across from. So line him up against a DB, he's too physical. Line him up against uh, an edge, a uh, guy on the edge, he's, he's going to be too quick. Put him up against a linebacker, he'll just high point the ball and use his length. So call him Mr. Mismatch because that's exactly what he is. He makes defenders look like they're out of place. Just like a freshman looks like they're out of place on the first deck trying to finish their wildcat when the seniors are already done. Just looks wrong. Okay, so will, will Donovan sign with the Aggies? I, I think he will, uh, and I give him a 95% chance. I give him myself 5% chance just on the, I mean, Maybe it's not going to happen, but the signs all point towards this guy's going to be an Aggie on National Signing Day. So, as mentioned before, he comes from Dickinson, Texas, which is also the home of Jalen Watermeyer. You know who that is, right? Right. So, there figures to be a pretty close bond there. Um, Donovan is also very actively recruiting for AM, and he's a huge benefit to us trying to achieve our goal. He's on the recruiting trail for us, he's kind of up there with Bobby Taylor. Um, and uh, Donovan specifically is always looking for the next puzzle piece. So if you follow him on Twitter, which you should, you'll know all about that. So huge guy to have in our corner, and he's going to be great on the field for us. So uh, before we get to the next guy, please like and subscribe. I uh, really like it if you know, turn on your notification bell so I can keep bringing you more content your way. Um, kind of want to interact with you guys a little bit more as well. So I appreciate it if in the comments you would tell me what is your favorite Aggie tradition um, and then tell me why. Um, and then if you have any suggestions, put hashtag, hashtag suggestion in the comments and I'd love to hear what other things you guys like for me to talk about. Um, I'm going to be looking at the preview for the upcoming season uh, here in the near future, but uh, any other topics I'd really love to consider and I'd really appreciate the ideas. So now, on this next note, uh, if you live near Houston, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? The worst thing about game day when you live in Houston is your trip from Houston to College Station. So you're on 290, you're, getting, you're coming right up on Highway 6, right at Hempstead, and then what happens? You're hitting some traffic, right? That traffic is some of the worst traffic. It's just least backed up, backed up for two miles. Okay, it probably adds 30 minutes to your trip when it should have taken you an hour and 10 but now it took you almost two hours, right? So I swear I'm gonna see if I can't put out, you know, something to get Terry Price to send some barbecue to Austin for Governor Abbott. See if we can't get TxDOT to come um, do an expansion or something because that daggum traffic is, a, is just about as annoying as the dude on the bus when the bus is full and he didn't get up out of his seat to let the lady sit down. That's how bad that traffic is. Now this next guy, PJ Williams, he's exactly the same way. So he's persistent just like that traffic and he's a dadgum annoying to the defenders. So um, he's so consistent, Cupertino sets their time to PJ. So I'm not sure I've seen him miss, you know, call this guy nine to five. He's always on the job and working hard. He's a six foot five, 265 pound offensive tackle 
rated 0 .96 by 247, and clearly a four-star recruit. PJ will most likely take his criticism for his weight because he's kind of light right now compared to some of the SEC talent that he might be going up against. So going to the SEC West, he'll face guys on the edge that dress out close to 300 pounds. And if the D-line stunts, he could have a 310-pound-plus tackle coming his way. So 265 pounds is a little bit of a deficit. So he'll take most of his criticism there. But he's long and lean as a junior. Um, and he has plenty of time to add that weight. So... Um, the key is going to be whether or not he does it in a way that optimizes his current skill set. Now, he makes up for his perceived deficit in a number of ways. He's an accomplished basketball player who so has above average quickness, footwork, and hand placement. Don't underestimate his strength either. Just because he's 265 pounds doesn't mean he's not a, sh a strong guy. And uh, He utilizes his ability to place his hands and, uh, and feet in such a way that optimizes his leverage, so he, he puts his strength to, to full use. Um, and again, it's very beneficial that he plays basketball because whenever he adds that weight and when he does, that weight is going to come and be carried in a lean way, you know, kind of think about like, um, I don't know, I'm not comparing him directly to JJ Watt, but right, but JJ Watt's really heavy guy, you know, 300 plus pounds, but he's really lean. So I look for this guy to put on weight in a similar fashion as soon as we get him on a mill plan and get him lifting in our program, but he'll add it in a senior year, year as well. Um, so his skill set in combination with his gain is going to make him just a, a dynamic player. Uh, he's going to be a great asset. Right now, I put him 90% um, chance. I think he's really close with Donovan Green, and I see both these guys having formed a big bond that are going to keep them uh, likely locked into our class. Okay. Now, quick recap. Uh, we now have six out of eight players who carry the blue chip status, giving us a 75% ratio. We have six out of 16 needed, and so we need to add about 10 more four-star players. So for perspective, and it's early in the cycle, teams like Ohio State and Alabama have 88% plus at this point. So a little bit away from that. Um, now all, including us, are, we're all gonna likely add some three stars as we go along. So the quicker we get to 16, the more room we're gonna to have to do deeper recruiting dives and find those um, special three-star gems that Jimbo is so great at doing, which I think we've got a lot of, and we just added one recently, but we'll get to him in another episode. So um, here we are, we're on our way, we're progressing. Uh, tune in next time, that's all I've got for now. Thanks and gig them.